What's going on, everyone? My name's Llama. Well, my name's not actually Llama, but that's not important. You can call me Llama. Um, welcome to the Rules and Challenges Overview video for my The Wilderness Game series. Um, so in my, if you watched my trailer, um, I mentioned a couple times and in, uh, in the video and in the description that it is uh, not simply a Wilderness Iron Man series, but uh, one with a twist, uh, one with uh, challenges that were uh, not exactly heard of before. So that's what this video is going to be about. Uh, but first we're going to go over the uh, the basic rules. So these are going to be the typical Wilderness Iron Man uh, rules. Um, and then we'll start with the challenges after. So. Uh, rule number one is that I must stay in the wilderness. This is obvious, of course, uh, but less obvious. Um, wilderness means north of the ditch. So uh, some people th uh, thought originally with uh, another Wilderness Iron Man series that uh, they wouldn't be allowed uh, inside the Mage Bank, inside the Corporal Beast Cave, or uh, the King Back Black Dragon Lair because they're non-combat areas. But they are within the wilderness, so they are allowed. Um, number two, no trading with other players. Um, I'm not an official Iron Man, but this will be a restriction I've placed upon myself to maintain that unofficial Iron Man status. Rule number three, uh, looting is allowed. So when I PK someone, I want to pick up their stuff, I can do that. Um, someone else PKs another player, leaves their loot on the ground, I can pick that up as well. Because this wilderness series is going to be very survival themed and oriented, that's going to be like my scavenging uh, for supplies type of um, ability. So that will be allowed. Um, exceptions to the first rule of staying in the wilderness are going to be skill capes. Uh, if I ever get a 99, I'm going to want the cape. I will just keep that. Um, I'm sure I'd have a video just based on achieving that 99, to be honest, but. Um, I'd put myself in a video going there in a PvP world to keep the aspect of danger. Same with the rest of these. If I need to go outside of the wilderness for them, I'll do them in a PvP world to maintain the danger thing. Uh, wilderness Diary interactions. Um, Dead will ever complete one of them. I don't think I can just within the wilderness, but if I did for some reason, I'd do that in a PvP world. Getting to Edgeville Dungeon need to walk there outside of the wilderness, so I could do that. Uh, coordinate clue equipment, one of my sub-challenges is going to be uh, completing one clue scroll, so if I get a coordinate clue that's within the wilderness, I'm going to get the sextant uh, chart and watch just to keep that uh, clue alive, I guess. Not have to drop it, but I'll do that in a PvP world and include it in an episode as well. Uh, dying. Obviously, if I respawn in Lumbridge, that's not in the wilderness, so I'll just take the quickest route back to the wilderness. And yeah, uh, I added quests at the end too. There's none in mind that I have uh, that I plan on doing just yet, but in the future I may. And I'll probably do something to be able to unlock those so it's not just that I can just go do the quests because that kind of defeats the uh, wilderness bound aspect to this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, on top of the rules, um, there is a small list of things I've allowed myself to do before uh, entering the wilderness for good, and that is, uh, those are, sorry, uh, Tutorial Island, obviously. I was going to reset my death location to Edgeville as well, but then realized I needed 5 mil and had a disappointing 25 GP in my inventory, uh, so that backfired. Um, I changed my, or I toggled my kill death ratio on. Um, that's how I'm going to be tracking a uh, kill count type of challenge I have coming up next. And I've allowed myself to do the Druidic Ritual quest, um, just because having an extra skill for the survival type of thing is going to be um, smart. There's no reason almost not to, because it's just like, there's no way I'm, like, logical way, uh, entertaining way, that I'm going to be able to unlock the Herblore skill. Like, I couldn't just... I don't think I'd PK a thousand potions and then just unlock it or a bunch of vials or something. There's nothing really that goes with it. So I just did that quick. Um, making potions will be helpful in trading with my account. And I've started the Wilderness Diaries. So moving on to the challenges. 
uh, number one here is going to be PK All 50 Unique Team Capes. This is going to be the, one of my um, favorite ones, I think. It'll be really exciting when I find a, a new uh, team cape if I have a bunch already. But So basically, I'm not allowed to buy any. These, I won't be allowed to loot from uh, loots of other players. The only way I can obtain these is um, through... Um, like a player that I've PK'd myself and have looted from that drop. There's no other way I can get these, so these will all be PK'd. Number two uh, is going to be achieve 1,000 kills. And so I'm going to use the kill death ratio um, little overlay on the just in RuneScape. Um, just because I, I'm tracking so many different challenges here on all these graphics that it's just going to be easier just to look at that um, to do so. Um, I know it's, I think it's above 30 wilderness that it counts kills, so it's not going to be exactly accurate, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me, it'll make things easier. Excuse me. So it'll be, uh, tracked with that. Challenge number three is acquire all wilderness boss pets. You might think this is a lofty goal, uh, but I actually had the dark core pet in here before, um, so that would have been pretty much impossible. I, I took it out because I don't think it's realistic. I realized the drop weight rate was 1 in 5,000. And to go to court masses as a 1 defense pure um, with probably not too high HP for a long time, um, I'll probably just die a million times, never really get any drops, and I'm definitely not going to be able to solo it with 1 defense and like 52 prey. So um, I took that out. If I manage to get all 6, I'll add that in just for an extra uh, challenge of course but challenge number four is going to be uh, kill a player of every combat level this one should be interesting as well um, this means I won't be able to really level up my count as fast as I want for example if I'm getting close to 50 combat and for some reason haven't killed a level three or four or six or whatever I'm going to have to be careful because the chances of me finding one of those in like 55 wilderness is going to be extremely slim. In fact, I may never find one there, so then I would have uh, lost this challenge um, within the wilderness games. So I can't... Uh, I have to be careful with this, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, moving on to challenge number five. This is going to be eliminate all the different types of wilderness wanderers so that means if you're using the wilderness or in the wilderness for a certain reason um, you should be on this list if I forgot something let me know in the comments um, but I think all of these are here and more um, got the streamer youtuber got the wilderness Iron Man in here those should be those should be fun if I ever run into those um, so yeah, that, uh, number five is pretty self-explanatory. Moving on to the sixth challenge here. Um, this is going to be to receive all the rare monster drops in the wilderness. So uh, keep in mind, I'm staying a one defense pure. I will have prayer, but uh, you know some of these are going to take a lot longer, as opposed to if I was able to wear like full Varax or something, you know, to kill these bosses. But it's the main ones, Odium Ward, Malediction Ward, um, the Dragon Items from the Rare Drop Table, um, an Elite Clue Scroll, KBD Heads, uh, the Wilderness Rings, the Two Shields, and a Visage basically sums it up. And the seventh uh, challenge, not, not seventh challenge, but uh, kind of the kind of list of challenges here. These are going to be the other challenges that don't really have a... Uh, sub list or like a list of milestones to track them with. So one's going to be complete a clue scroll, achieve 99 combat skill, uh, collect clue scroll rewards. So there will be a way for me to hunt uh, clue scrollers within the wilderness. I think if I just go to coordinate locations and things like that and uh, hop around at times, I'll be able to do that and find people that have opened caskets. But other than that, there's. Uh, Lots of prayer gear, gear people use in the wilderness that are clue scroll items that I'll be able to collect. But 
things like Third Age, I doubt we'll be making an appearance in the wilderness, so I haven't made a, a specific list for these because I don't think I'll be able to get all of them. Uh, so, just will be a cool bank tab to have. Uh, complete all possible wilderness diary tasks. So since I can't really do any quests or anything like that, I think this will be a, a fun type of side um, challenge to kind of try to complete. So you just see how many I can do, you know. Um, and lastly, a viewer item collection. So um, I thought I, as uh, one exception to the no trading rule of this series, I think it'd be cool to see as the series grows if um, an item collection within the game could grow as well. So if anyone that starts to enjoy my videos or whatever wanted to donate a bunch of these items, I'd just keep the one stack of items in my bank, not use it for anything. It would just be like a useless item. Uh, Item-wise, I was thinking skulls or torches. Just whatever the overall consensus is, is, is fine by me. So just let me know. Uh, I think that just about sums it up, so if you have any suggestions for uh, rules, for the item collection, anything like that, let me know. Toss the video a like, subscribe, episode 1 will be coming soon, and thank you for watching.